This is The Chris Abraham Show. Welcome to Season 5, Episode 1 of The Chris Abraham Show. This is a jump of the gun. Uh, It is 31 December 2022. New Year's Eve, and I just dropped off a giant green navy backpack duffel of black t-shirts and picked up a bag green canvas navy backpack duffel of clean black t-shirts so I have a plentitude of black t-shirts as you know from maybe knowing me that I go through a lot of black t-shirts and unlike someone odd like uh, like Prince or Michael Jackson I do not just wear a crispy new black t-shirt and then throw it away no these are accumulations that are only thrown away not when there's little moth holes in them not when they are some uh, dun- dunny some off black some uh, not even gray just light black stretched out rags I only throw them away when I discover a gaping hole uh, somewhere usually my underarms so I'm starting now with uh, a new episode season 5 episode 1 and what's driven me to doing this episode and I hope it's recording is um, Netflix just launched the uh, movie version of uh, White Noise by Don DeLillo, Don DeLillo, with uh, Adam Driver and an assorted cast. And I made a wicked quick uh, commentary on it. And that commentary was as follows, if you're still hearing me. I said... Five minutes in first imp- five minutes in first impression of white noise. One, Oscar vehicle for driver. Two, disciple of Eugene O'Neill. Three, stage inspired. Four, excellent cast. Five, trying too hard. Six, tropey McTros- trope face slash cliche m- cliche McCliche face. Seven, plagiarized from the New Yorker probably. And eight, der- derivative, but in a good way. I didn't know at the time that it was Don DeLillo. I love post-war modernists and postmodernists. My degree is in American literature. But I never really got into DeLillo, DeLillo, uh, more of a Thomas Pynchon, Kurt Vonnegut, uh, David Foster Wallace kind of guy. Um... And, you know, I didn't respond it very badly because um, I don't know if you've ever watched, like, West Wing or the Gilmore Girls or whatever. It's so completely on. You know, like, when you have that person who just needs to fill any moment with chatter. Um, But more of a Gilmore Girls version of that where... uh, Or a West Wing version where every moment is filled by les mots justes, uh, les mots justes, the, the right words, perfectly, uh, if you will, uh, what is it, um, there's a term, staccato, it kind of in a, a, a Tommy gun staccato, and I was like, man, this is too intense, this is like um, some... This is like the New Yorker, like a short story from the New Yorker, or like one of those um, 1950s, early 1960s Philip Roth kind of vibes where everybody is so brilliant and everybody is so morose and everybody is is tweeted and, and, uh, and corduroyed up to the hilt with elbow patches and, and, uh, and, and, um, uh, key parties, is that what they're called? 
like what is it called the ice the ice storm sort of that kind of vibe and I'm like dude dude don't try so freaking hard man I wonder what's up like I don't picture Don DeLillo as being such a showboater and so what I did is I quickly pivoted to my Kindle and uh, downloaded white noise primary text and audiobook um, and it's an unabridged uh, audiobook and it's a perfect rendering but because it's not au courant to have a voiceover uh, like they did in in uh, movies from the 70s and 80s like um, oh what is that one with Robin Williams it's a brilliant one Robin Williams is a wrestler and he's the uh, the the child of a of a, of a of a comatose vet with a heart on and a nurse feminist nurse and they're out of school oh, I forget what it's called it's brilliant brilliant but um, like that there's a lot of you know a lot going on but I read the book and I'm listening to the audiobook and it's a very quiet book like it's an extremely quiet book but the book is 90 percent uh, uh, voiceover is 90 percent narrator it's a third party uh, um, uh, it's a third person novel and it's I assume uh, narrated from the point of view of the of the um, the 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 uh, Nazi uh, the Hitler academic um, but it's a very quiet book it's very beautifully written it's very illustrative it's very beautifully paced it's actually quite a masterwork and I'm only um, hopefully still recording I'm actually only um, I don't know I don't know how much how much uh, I've listened to it I'm on I'm 12 uh, I'm I'm on chapter 5 so I have 12 hours 13 minutes left and I must say that it's beautiful but 90% of the insight is not um, hurriedly input by a rapid fire Le Mosust like this book is narrated as though it is um, written uh, after the I don't know, the congestion of years, as though someone were to sit down at the end of an event after uh, a good amount of digestion and take all of those calories and, and use them in energetic pursuit of the right, the right wording, the right commentary, the right analyses, the perfect interpretation of what happened, a exploration of what could be seen, of what one's life is like, of detail work on the buildings around, on setting the stage, on set, setting the setting the environ. But when it's done by having a cacophonous, um, I don't know, what is it called, entourage of, of everybody else's children and your own, um, making editorial commentary in order to move forward the plot based on things that nobody could ever know except if if um, fed them like beautiful pablum uh, off the spoon of a narrator then you really have um, a busyness, a noisiness uh, an eccentric stage interpretation that requires uh, that you that you almost need to tell, not show. Um, people don't pay enough attention. The cinematography and the perfect choice uh, of the visual is extremely impressive. But in a world where people do a lot of their uh, viewing on, uh, on phone screens, uh, the cinematographical um, the tapestry of this beautifully woven movie are not going to be necessarily always accessible 
and it requires a certain level of insight uh, and and honestly rewatch that is going to mean that they're going to have to pivot into having everybody on screen incessantly channel the 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 um, uh, the set uh, of uh, the mediumship. There's a mediumship of the narrator that comes through the mouths of everybody uh, involved, including uh, the beautiful cast of the professors and the Elvis scholar. His puerile nature is part of the narrative. The delicious uh, erotic lovemaking is in the narrative. Um, the choice of his wife is, uh, is a half measure. And in a world where we're supposed to be uh, fat friendly and where we're supposed to be seeing the active beautifulness of hips and bust and weight and gravity of a, of a bulky woman, I think he calls her bulky. He's saying there's a gravitas and bulk and that her beautiful blonde curls would uh, be frivolous if not in the body of a bulky, softed woman. Um, there's a lot of mistakes. Uh, uh, it, it, it pleads so closely to the original text that that's a pity, and um, I, I do not see, I do not see at all uh, Adam Driver or any of the other characters in their spots. But I mean, as we know from seeing Adam Driver in that amazing movie where he is a bus driver, um, he could read the, he could act the phone book. He could read the phone book. He could drone the phone book and uh, be up for an Oscar. So this is the best interpretation. I think it's the most perfect interpretation of the five chapters that I've seen so far. And ironically, I've seen pretty much only those five chapters of the movie. I've only seen up to when the uh, when they're dealing with the existential crisis of the toxic cloud. But I dare say that I'm impressed but the one thing that freaked me out is the constant staccato frenzy that is the, um, uh, what's the name of the guy who writes movies like, or TV shows like, uh, like West Wing. That frenetic constant narrative of the perfect witticism and the perfect uh, riposte, is that the word, riposte? That post, the perfect... Um, uh, I don't know, uh, what is it, uh, um, the, uh, um, the dodge and parry, the, the, uh, what is it in fencing, the, um, it's in fencing, it's in, um, when you have, what is it called when you have a sword and you have a dagger, um, and you use them both in, in conflict? But it's that kind of thing. It's as if it's like instead of uh, the organic nature of a, an actual knife fight, which can be very brutal and is generally short and messy, it is um, stage-directed um, sword fighting. It is, it is um, the, the extended narrative of WWE. It is not real. It doesn't come across as real. Uh, discussion. It, it comes across maybe like a family, like when I speak to my buddy, my brother from another mother, Mark Harrison, we have a very tight back and forth. So I dare say that's the kind of back and forth that a tight family over time, a family that has dinner with each other and who are extremely smart and witty and playful and for whom history and literature um, you know, who might be a little neuroatypical, who might be a little bit eccentric, who've been living on a college campus for uh, 15 years. Maybe that kind of tightness is accessible in a tight relationship like uh, in the, um, um, uh, like in, uh, um, like in a family, like that kind of highly tightly written uh, shorthand relationship conversation, but 
it's not that. Uh, don't call for it. It is a it is it, it is a valiant attempt at trying to turn a very um, omnipotent narrator. It's not. It's not an omnipotent. It's not an omnipresent or omnipotent narrator. Um, it's a third-person narrative narrator of the of the um, of the uh, the protag protagonist. Excuse me, uh, who is writing a story after the fact. So it's not a third person. Is it a second person narration? I forget my literature and creative writing stuff. Maybe it's a. It's not a second person. It's not a first person. Could be a. I don't know. Che pa. You guys tell me. Anyway, that's my analysis. I'm just. I I rarely these days uh, completely feel overwhelmed, like I'm going to explode unless I write a blog post or say something and that is um what is happening right now so i love you guys i hope you're having fun happy new year's is it uh feliz nueve años i don't know and uh feliz navidad and i'll talk to you soon love you bye-bye thank you for listening to the chris abraham show make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes Until next time.